In this video, we will be testing and recording the readings of an regulated power supply. So we can see there where the A point is for testing and that's the B point. Your negative for both of those will be the bottom part. That's the negative of the circuit. All these are discussed in, a, in previous videos where we're building the circuit. So there is the emitter and the top one is the collector of the transistor and so let's get right into it we need a power supply we need a multimeter and so let's connect the power supply and it's an AC power supply we're probably getting around 12 volts 12 to 13 volts uh, but the readings won't be in that region um, in cases higher or lower and in cases uh, the same so again it just depends what what uh, values we have for our parts and you can see the light is on I've got my power supply there off light comes on so let's get right into it let's put the multimeter on the correct uh, let's switch it on and then put it select the scale I select uh, DC is what I want to measure. I'm putting an AC supply in, but I'm getting out DC. It is a power supply, a regulated power supply, so more than one voltage. So I've got my test lead on negative. The black lead is on negative. And we are looking to, to test point A, which is four points on top. But I'll just go straight to my collector. And then... Uh, test point B and you can see there's two values first value was around 16 volts and the second value was around 11 under 12 volts all right this will be transferred onto a data sheet a little later on in this video right now we want to test and see what it looks like on an oscilloscope so you need to have some knowledge about the oscilloscopes uh, not not heavy or detailed um, but we need to select certain screens or zoom into the waves so again here i'm just saying where i'm going to plug my leads so in this case i have two probes and i can actually plug them both on and just test and see what the waves look like together Maybe later we'll look and see how we would use one probe. But right now, that would be a negative, and we would put the, both probes on negative. Anyway, is negative at the bottom. Top probe is output B. You can see I pull the clamp back, and then I hook the test probe. I hook then onto the negative part. It can be a bit tricky, these leads will jump off depending on how low the, your, your uh, parts are placed on the board. But just remember, parts should be about a millimeter away or millimeter clearance. These test leads, um, hooks are literally a millimeter, sometimes less. So this is for very sensitive and detailed readings. The oscilloscope is actually more accurate than a multimeter but this is not that lesson so I again want to put a power supply onto this uh, circuit this my same power supply that I used for the multimeter testing and so I just plug it onto the leads and then I've got my oscilloscope on already and I would just press the auto button in this case it came on on its own and I've got a wave the looks like a DC wave so the yellow is output B the sorry the yellow is output A and the purple is output B let's zoom into this wave and see what it looks like so as I'm zooming into uh, that frequency or that wave with that knob that I'm turning on the right I can see how the wave changes the bottom wave also actually changes, it's just that you can't see because it's a complete line. Um, so again, 
it just depends which wave I want to draw. Again, if I count those blocks or lines, I can see that I want to be as close as possible to the values that I got on the multimeter. And so if I count those as 5, 10 volts, 15, so it's about 16 volts. So that peaks on 16 volts. Uh, that is the A reading. And if I go from 0 there and I count upwards, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 volts, or just over 11 volts is the purple. So again, we will just look later or just now on and see how we will transfer this information onto a data sheet. Um, so I've actually also freezed the screen, the red light you see on there, run stop I've pressed because this wave runs across the screen. So uh, it's, it's difficult to, to catch that or draw that. So we just freeze the screen or run stop the screen. So that is it for measuring. And we want to then transfer this, this wave onto a data sheet, which we will do in a minute. So again, I take the hooks off and I can just switch the power supply off as well. And that will conclude uh, testing on the... In fact, let's just see what happens if you have one set of leads. That is that is uh, that was the B reading this is the A reading and you can see that if I count 5 10 15 if I press this run stop button the wave will actually stop and I can see there we go that is the B reading 0 5 10 just about 11 or 12 volts again that's just a straight line DC as an output that will con conclude the testing let's uh, look at the recording of all of this multimeter and oscilloscope readings now so let's get right into it that is the data sheet for it and we've got the oscilloscope screen right there even though this data sheet is for multimeter and oscilloscope, we will see there that the top uh, rows are the readings for voltage 1 or voltage A and B. Uh, the top section is for oscilloscope readings and the bottom one is for the multimeter readings. So let's just see what our multimeter readings were and see how we would write them in or record them onto this data sheet. Um, Let's have a look here. I've got them on the left lined up for us. Let's just zoom into that picture of the multimeter. You can see I've circled the readings or what we've done and how we've tested. I've got about 16.02 volts. That is test or output A with the black lead a reference to ground. You can see the notes on the picture and output A would be on the collector of the transistor or the A point. And we can just uh, transfer the reading from the screen, 16.02 volts, to the bottom section of the uh, multimeter section where we, need, where we need to fill in the reading. And so that would be the bottom part of the page. You'll see me um, writing in the value there. There we go. And then we want to look at output B. Again, the reference to ground is the negative lead. And we have a value of 11.55 volts. We've got um, the emitter as output B we have tested. And I've recorded that as 11.55. Now I want similar readings for the oscilloscope. So let's see what the oscilloscope readings give us. If we can just zoom into those. That was one of the first waves I found. And so really, if you see those little um, 
waves on top, that is a lot. And so if I even zoom into that further, it would be the second drawing and the bottom left. And you can see that's much easier and much more manageable to draw. I then go ahead and draw my perpendicular, the axis uh, for positive and negative almost of the wave. I've got your quadrants there. So I've got the zero for the for the A reading. And then now I just divide my, pa my page up. My vaults. We will see now where I get this from. I will put in a segment. What I've done. So I've got the about 20 volts because I know it's just under 20 volts. I will use that as a maximum and I need to have uh, output A and B drawn. I'll just make some notes on my data sheet and say where I'm going to draw. I will use the bottom left drawing which I want to do and there we go. We've got an idea of what I'm currently doing. I've drawn in those zero lines. The middle line, the it looks whiter than the other dotted lines. And we will see what the dots are on the far right. It says the zero, one volt, two volt, three volts. And we can furthermore just break that up and, and put it in. So again, the, I count the, my blocks. And again, that's output B, where that reading will be recorded or that wave. So we need to, we need to draw a wave and we need to establish what uh, um, volts uh, it is drawn at. So next we want to just divide the blocks up. So four blocks for me on my data sheet is one uh, square on the oscilloscope screen. That's for me to get some accuracy. And you can see there I've literally, I'm pulling, I'm pu putting on the paper every volt up to 20 volts. So this lines I draw, I calibrate and divide that page up myself. You have to do that. And again, Let's just have a look at the screen of the oscilloscope and see what I'm actually busy doing. As you can see there in the center, I'm pulling in those little lines, my reference points. Basically 1 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt, 5 volts. So I carry on, I do the whole of my page, I prepare it. And this is all just for me to be able to draw that two waves or that signals, shall we say. When we've done that, we are ready to do the, the wave. The simple one is obviously B, output B is just a straight line. I can immediately go to that, get it out of the way. I calculate there or I pull the lines there and I see exactly where it is. You can see I've made some notes, some animation there on the left. You can just draw a straight line as close as possible to what it shows on the oscilloscope. I would record this as just 11 volts, but let's, um, again there, that's what I've done. So I can either just write it immediately or I can just go and, and do the wave A or signal A. So I'm counting. I know I've got them all divided up. I'm establishing my top points, and if you look at the drawing, I can see my peaks, I can count the lines, and I can establish kind of approximately where I am on my grids of the oscilloscope screen. So again, I'm just drawing in my, my, my highest points, and then I'm drawing in my lowest points, almost in order for me to just get my wave in. And again, yeah, this is just about connecting the dots now. It doesn't have to be a rocket science. Uh, you can do that freehand. I'm just using a ruler uh, to, to make it look a little bit more realistic, uh, more like the wave. Uh, you can basically just darken it a bit. Again, pencil doesn't do justice uh, to this, but that looks to me like what I can see on the oscilloscope screen. So again, that is B. Let's see what it says there. It is approximately close to the multimeter reading and I've got 16 volts on top.